This hobby grade pistol with fully upgradable internals was $9.99. The injection molding process is pretty straightforward. You get a cool casting, usually made of metal. You inject it with hot plastic, plastic of your choice, high quality, low quality, nylon in some cases. Cool it and out comes the shell of your new branded blaster. Right now there's a big revolution going on in Asia. Multiple manufacturers, even the little ones, are all in a big frenzy to compete with each other to make the ultimate blaster. One of the biggest markets right now for cloning is the sealed breech pistol blaster. We've seen so far like 15 different iterations of the Gecko Lizzie. We're talking about a blaster that originally was a 3D printed design and it somehow turned into the biggest explosion of clones in the market right now. If you're a toy manufacturer and you wanna create your own version of a certain blaster, for example, let's say I wanna create the Not Enough Nerf Lizzie Gecko, I basically have to go to one of these factories, show them that I changed one little cosmetic item on this blaster to make it exclusive to my brand and they'll let me borrow their tooling and their presses so I can make my own version of the Lizzie. It's that simple. The problem with this is quality control issues. I can imagine there's some intricacies related to the bare minimums of quality that have to be held, certain kind of plastic yields. For the most part, they all feel the same. The good thing about some of these smaller manufacturers is they have a lot less overhead and they can offer deals that are pretty insane. Sometimes these deals are combined with some situations like I've mentioned in previous videos where you mismanaged your inventory agreement with Amazon and now you're sitting on an over inventory crisis situation with Amazon and Amazon tells you, you gotta get rid of some of this inventory or we're gonna get rid of it for you. And then we see situations that result in what we're gonna to cover today. Today we're gonna to figure out how the Fire Phoenix pistol from Jin Sheng ended up on Amazon for $10. And we're gonna see what exactly you get for $10. Is this like the other Fire Phoenixes or is it just like every other clone out there? Let's find out. guys very official looking box i mean there's at least two registered trademark toy brand names right here a yarrow toy and an exalt never heard of these brands they're probably some sub manufacturing brands from china the phoenix blaster is very elaborately depicted here on this graphic very cool soldier holding it very cool bandolier on her person what appears to be some bionic cybernetic arm very cool graphic and then a very official military model fire phoenix badge right here sports elite model and then of course the white with the 15 ages plus on this particular white sticker but on the box it does say 14 plus opening the box we get some instructions which surprisingly have a lot of english text on them but this is an amazon sold component so it's probably part of the minimum requirements if you do want to sell on amazon get a single mag with the blaster you get the blaster wrapped in some cushy bubble wrap eight round mag fits nicely and then you get these domed fpj darts which I've actually never seen, but they're really cool looking because they remind me of real steel. The actual tip is hard plastic, but it's also domed. It's not like squared like we're used to with our darts. That's kind of cool to see. You get 20 rounds of these. The blaster actually feels pretty okay. It's not the highest quality, like that nylon feel that you get from the Phoenix, the S200S Viper, or other models that you see coming out of Asia right now. Right now, we're comparing anything we see going forward to the $10 price tag. Keep that in mind. I'm pretty sure there's different iterations of this Fire Phoenix that both perform and are aesthetically different. But right now, we're just concentrated on the fact this blaster looks pretty amazing and feels pretty good for a $10 price tag. Even for the $20 normal price that it was going for on sale, I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, any iteration of the Fire Phoenix right now that you buy anywhere is at least $30. But the normal going price, if you go to Gen Duo right now or View Blaster, this thing is like between $45 and $55. Let me know in the comments if you're getting it any cheaper, whether you're in Europe or North America. It's just your basic Fire Phoenix. When it's empty, the plunger unit stays in a rearward position to indicate that you're out of rounds, like so. Then you can always manually return it to its position. Now, this doesn't mean that it's gonna unprime the blaster when it returns. It just means the slide lock is released you might still have some pressure in there. Very nice ergonomics. Obviously you wanna paint this muzzle area here orange, whether you have the white version or the gray version, especially if you have the gray version, for safety purposes, especially for outdoor play. The blaster feels great. I've actually never held the Phoenix in particular. I've held a lot of Lizzie's and the Vipers, but I've never felt 
the Fire Phoenix. And I have to admit, I'm very pleased with the way it feels. Now I have large to extra large hands, so for me it feels good. Not sure how this would feel to somebody with smaller hands, but that goes to any Gekoid variation of Blaster in general. Without further ado guys, let's put some rounds through the range and see what this baby can do. Let's get it. Fire Phoenixes are getting, like the ones you can get direct from Zen Duo or Bu Blaster, for example. But have seen some variations of the Lizzie Gecko, for example, that get 70 to 80 performance. They're like tuned a little lower, I guess, to reach a broader audience. But what gets me is that the box still says 14 plus, so I'm not sure why they put a weaker spring on it. But that's not the important part. The good thing about this is for $10, you can get a blaster that you could just go to your spring drawer, wherever you keep your spare springs, drop probably a Clash Combat or just something that fits nicely in here and easily get over 100. I'm not worried about the FPS. The gray one did get like high 70s, 80s. This one got a little bit in the lower 70s. I think it's just a matter of just running it a couple more times and getting some more rounds through it, breaking the seal a little bit like I had to do with the Fire Phoenix carbine that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. I'm still blown away by how good of a deal this is regardless of the lower performance than normal. I think there's a lot of potential in these kind of blasters. Now I'm probably gonna open this one up and mod it and probably do a future video on it. But yeah, $10 you can't convince me not to do it. If you like this video, you're definitely gonna like this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay blasting, foam fam.